You can quickly memorize Freud's stages of sexual development by creating an acronym. Take the first letter of each stage, O-A-P-L-N-G, OAPLEG, which is not really a great acronym. You could create a sentence in which the first letter of the words starts with the first letter of each stage. How about this? Orangutans always play with little gorillas. Orangutans are sort of a funny animal, and this sentence is memorable. Say it a few times, and you'll remember it. That should work. Or you can make up your own, but have fun with it. Now, the letter P and the word phallic could give you a little trouble, since it sounds like phallic starts with an F. But don't let this hang you up. How about this sentence? Orangutans always fall over little gorillas. You use the word fall in your sentence to remind you of phallic. You just have to remember that you made this tiny substitution of the F with the P. This sentence should help you to remember the order of Freud's stages. Piaget's theory of cognitive development consists of four stages, with several key ideas attached to each stage. We'll memorize this theory using a combination of keywords and the method of loci. Typically, the method of loci requires you thinking about locations very familiar to you, like your house or your path to work. In this video, we'll use locations that are familiar to just about everyone. We'll start with the Statue of Liberty in the U.S., go to Big Ben in London, the Eiffel Tower in France, and finish at the Colosseum in Italy. As we move along this route, we'll take the key ideas from each stage and attach them to these locations. Let's get started. Piaget called his first stage the sensory motor stage. It occurs during the ages of birth to two, and the key challenge for children is to understand that objects exist even when they can't see them. Object permanence. We'll use two pennies, or cents, to remind us of sensory motor, and we'll use a pair of ants to remind us of object permanence. At our first location, then, we'll picture the Statue of Liberty holding two cents instead of a flame, and riding on each cent is a pair of ants. Remember, yes, this is a little ridiculous, but the method works. Spend a moment on this odd image, and then move on. Two cents and a pair of ants. The second stage from ages 2 to 7 is called pre-operational, and the challenge here is mastering what Piaget called the conservation of energy tasks. Also important, children are very egocentric at this stage. Our key words? We'll use a preacher standing behind an operating table to remind us of pre-operational. We'll imagine that Smokey the Bear, who stands for conservation, is also behind the table, looking a little uncertain of himself, and finally, that the table is made of Legos, which will remind us of egotistic. We'll place Big Ben on the operating table. Again, you might be thinking that this is an odd way to study, but time and again we find that it simply works. Stage 3 is called Concrete Operations, and the key ideas here are that egocentrism is fading, the conservation of energy tasks are beginning to be understood, and that children are capable of logical thinking. Our location? the Eiffel Tower. Now, how are we going to tie all this together? Well, we'll make the base of the tower out of concrete and the rest of the tower out of Legos. But they'll be faded in color from the Legos from the previous stage. We'll put a log home for logical thinking, teetering at the top of the tower, and finally, we'll put Smokey standing next to the tower looking very confident. Take a look at the key parts of this image. Concrete base, Legos in the middle, log home at the top, Smokey standing confidently nearby. The fourth and final stage is formal operations, and the key idea is that youngsters are now capable of abstract thought. The word formal sounds a little like four males, and the first three letters of the word abstract are abs. So, four males with great abs. Our final location is the Colosseum. What do you picture inside the Colosseum? Four gladiators, the four males. They have great abs and maybe they're playing the game Operation. Guess what? You've just memorized all of Piaget's stages. Now, like any new learning, yes, you have to review this a couple times, but unlike rote learning, this new information is going to come back to you really fast, and it's going to stay with you a really long time.
There are three key stages and two substages for each of Kohlberg's levels of moral development. We'll focus on the three key stages. Once you have those, the substages will be easy to figure out. We'll use the first few letters of each stage and imagine this. A preacher, a convict, and a Facebook post. In pre-conventional thinking, the child's concern is with possibly getting in trouble and getting punished from authority figures. So imagine a preacher yelling at his congregation that they're going to be punished from a higher power. At the conventional level, you make your moral choices based on what you think other people would do. Now you could use the first two syllables of the word conventional and imagine a convent. And if you ask the nuns why are they dressed that way, they would probably say, because everybody else is dressed that way. And that's the key idea. You make your moral decisions based upon what you think other people would do in your situation. Now, you could also use the idea of a convict named Norm who tries to excuse his actions by referring to others. Now, in the final stage of Kohlberg's model, post-conventional thinking, people do what they do because of deeply held convictions about what is right and wrong. You see a lot of this on Facebook. People post about what they strongly believe in. So let's imagine this kind of post when you think about post-conventional thinking. So, a preacher a convent or a convict, and a social media post. Use these to remind you about the key focus of each stage in Kohlberg's model.